Oi, in case you've been living under a rock and haven't heard this, there's something really special happening on Saturday that I would love you to come to. But my friend Kip Packham is going to help me explain it to you. And now the end is near. This little gig is almost over. You've drunk a lot of beer and very few of you are sober we've played a lot of songs but at the risk of seeming greedy right now we'd like you all to buy a CD Yes, this Saturday, the 23rd, from 2 till 5 o'clock, it's only three hours in the afternoon, in the Harlan Joy Community Room, 1083 Austin Avenue, where the radio station is, a super-duper CD sale, only $3 a single disc. Now then, I will quietly release the fact <laughs> that included in this is my wonderful friend and partner, Marion Daigler's CD collection donated by her husband, Paul. Trust me, wonderful, blues, Americana, alphabetically sorted, beautifully cared for, and she was a great picker of music. So don't miss an opportunity. Regrets you're bound to feel If you go home and didn't buy one So please Hear my appeal, don't make me kneel, come on and try one. They make a perfect gift for Uncle Joe or Auntie Edie. Just get your wallet out and buy a seat. Myself and the other WRFG DJ elves are scurrying around putting all this together on Friday to open the doors for you at 2 o'clock on Saturday. Don't miss out on this terrific fall CD sale and get yourself some joy. No, there's no Kanye discs. We've loved your warm applause, your very kind appreciation. So please, if there's a cue, let's not be blue, let's just be patient to think we only charge five measly quid, oh yes indeedy, that's less than Kanye West, so just buy a seat. No, there's no charge to come in. It's free to come join us and hunt through thousands of wonderful discs and come and say hello. And whatever you spend helps keep the radio station going. So there's that. Good morning, Atlanta. Kit Packham from One Jump Ahead here, throwing my voice all the way from England. You're listening to Good Morning Blues with that big swinging dignitary, UK Bob. On WRFG Atlanta. LA based but Houston born, the wonderful Teresa James and the Rhythm Tramps with yet another volume of rose colored glasses. Another very accomplished lady. Um, and her husband, I think, glues the band together. So. Rather good stuff, but we're slowing it down, so we're going to have tea time now, so just relax for a minute while we get some um, some new music into you uh, from another album I've been dying to get on the platter, as we say. I don't know that too many people know about this, but it's rather special. You've got lots of big names. You're going to hear them, and I'll tell you about it when we get to the other end. Meanwhile, pour the tea, relax, feet up. Turn the phone off. Well, that was then. They 
this is now Ain't no consolation prize for you anyhow Thirty years punching the clock For a big stick dinner and a fake gold watch Yes, we're living in troubled times Like a lone wolf working step living by your wits on oh. You put your dreams up on a shelf Where your brotherhood's gone, it's every man for himself Yeah, the payoff is a rip-off And the buyout, well, it's a sell-out And the cold call is the last call Cause there's nothing else to lose Talking company man blue Where you can't shop at the mom and pop Cause he all went down when the corporation came to town For what you're giving, the cost of living At the pumps and the store, but you still need more uh. Yeah, the payoff is a rip off And the buyout, but it's a sellout And the cold call is the last call Cause there's nothing left to lose Talking company man blue Said your party's jumping, everybody's having a good time, and you know what's going through my mind. Do you mind if I get comfortable hey. and kick off these shoes? Oh yeah. I said while you're fixing me a drink, play me some of them down home below. She said, I don't get out much on the town. You know it. And you know I done cut out a lot of that running around all week long. Say, I've been keeping my cool. I promise, Daddy, I've been a good girl. But tonight I let my hair down and party up with these down on me. Some down home blues all night long. That's right. Every other record or two. Mm -hmm. I say you gotta take off those fast tracks and get down with these down home blues. Thank you. 
in the dark Girl, I promise you, baby I never, never break your heart Come on, baby Baby, won't you hold my hand Woman, girl, I will be your man. <laughs> well, I certainly hope you enjoyed your tea break, but right at the end there, I did jump in and wake you up. Uh, I woke you up because you need to be awake to listen to my guest that's coming up. That was Bobby Rush, Boogie in the Dark. Before that, in the tea break, you had Robert Cray. Ah, uh, doing the midnight hour. Keb Mo and Lauren Mitchell, down home blues. And right in front of that, Jesse Dayton, talking company man blues. Um, the last two or three were all accompanied by the current Count Basie Orchestra. That's what makes them sound different. Cool, huh? The following is a public affairs bulletin board announcement brought to you by your station for progressive information and hand-picked quality music. The Atlanta International Fencing Foundation presents Fencing at the Little Five Points Community Center, 1083 Austin Ave, Northeast Atlanta, Georgia. Beginning October 17th on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Participants can range from ages five and up. For more information and registration, the email is atlfencersfoundation.org. That's A-T-L-F-E-N-C-E-R-S foundation.org. And the phone number is 404-522-2926. So let me introduce the chap that you're about to speak to because it's going to need some elaborate information, a five string band with a terrific name. But they're over on the left coast and they're not conventional at all. So their own variations of covers as well as their own originals come out in this raucous rendering of country, rock and roll, this and that just fierce musicians. They get a little rowdy live, and you're going to see that on October the 4th. So that's why they're here talking to us today. But I don't know whether they ride horses or not. They're probably in a conventional bus. We're going to find out. I know they go to do the Hardly Strictly Bluegrass Festival. If that steers you in any way, shape or form, what music you, you might hear, you know me. I run them out if I hear banjos and stuff like that. Not these guys. These What these guys do is very appealing, fun, unique, um, hard to describe. But that's what we're going to be talking about. They've got a new release. And it's one of those things that I guess you need to hear to offer any kind of description. Um, Ear Snacks is a great title as well as the band name. So I'm just not sure whether uh, his name is Ben Morrison. I don't think that he's open for Van Morrison, but, you know, that could be one of those things. Why don't I give you a little snifter of the music and hopefully, hopefully he'll appreciate it if I've tagged him in this particular song with a new genre called Gospel Grass. Well, there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down Gonna hold my body down When you hear trumpet sound You're gonna get up out the ground Ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down
Morning Blues. It's Thursday, and as usual, I've got something super interesting, often bizarre to share with you. With some of the folks I get to talk to around the world, uh, this chap is on the Ghost Coast. Uh, say hello to Mr. Ben Morrison. Hey, Ben. Hello. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Well, you know, they're shaking and baking and doing what they have to do to hassle with the Atlanta traffic. You know, we've got eight, nine million people here and six million cars. And so few of them got real driving lessons, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now, I came across you by the name of the band, okay? And I will argue to the death anybody that says that names aren't important. The name of the band and the name of the tracks or album and stuff like that are super important because first thing I thought, I said, oh, okay. So it's not the Comatose Brothers, right? And I start thinking, Brothers Johnson, you know, soul funk band. But the Brothers Grimm, we're talking fairy tales. So having it the other way around got my attention and the Comatose thing cracked me up, you know. I had to say to myself, are these guys friends of a band called Asleep at the Wheel? Is there some conspiracy? Yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, that's that's pretty funny. I've never gotten that before, but I do like that band. Well, yeah, but, you know, you're all in it together. You're all trying to make out that you're, you're dozing around. Is is there uh, an origin of the name, or you, you were just high at the time? Or? I... <laughs> Totally possible, but uh, it actually um, it, it was just kind of like a subconscious uh, vomit, I guess. I woke up early one morning. Uh, I was in England, actually. I woke up early one morning, and it just popped into my head. I think it was uh, – I, I attribute it to the fact that uh, my brother, uh, who, Alex, who plays banjo in the band, he uh, – whenever he gets excited, whenever he's playing, uh, he doesn't really show it his motions very well but his when he's j jamming on the banjo his eyes roll into the back of his head and all you see is the whites of his eyes and i think somehow <laughs> subconsciously that just like got into my brain somehow came out as comatose he's my brother and i don't know even how the uh the brothers part came first maybe like i had you know seen the title brothers karamazov um uh, so, you know, Russian novel, somewhere along the lines. I have no idea. And it just came out, and we're like, well, okay, let's try that out. And eventually uh, we, we thought about changing it because we're like, ah, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Like, you know, it doesn't match the music. It doesn't tell anything. And then we tried to come up with a bunch of different names, and nothing ever sounded better, so we just kind of stuck with it. Well, you see, that's the thing. You want the intrigue. I get so frustrated with American bands and businesses that want to do something generic because they've got to have their name in it. You know, J&G Auto or the Peter Smith Blues Band. Oh, please, you're going to bore the crap out of me, you know? Yeah, well, have yeah. a name for a business or a name for an act. Even if it's not displaying the content, you've caused a question mark in someone's brain, which is all you wanted to do to begin with, you know? Yeah, and I guess just having it stick, too. I mean, there are so many bands out there, um, and you you know want to be able to stand out somehow or just stick in people's brains somehow. So got to be a little bit left of center, I guess. Well, whatever it is, you know, it does, it did the job for me, and I have to listen to, you know, 300 releases a month. And to be honest, then mission accomplished because you got my attention by the name out of curiosity, and so I dug in. I will also tell you it's incredibly rare, as most people know me would agree, for you, for you to find me even listening to anything that could remotely have a banjo in it or be related to country but um, there are certain acts. There are certain acts. Yours is very appealing. It's very fun. And I've got a few, but it's a very tiny, special vein of, of people that get to to have that kind of content and still get away with it. So the hard part it, for me then, I want you to make the description of how you describe the overall band. But you, what you can't use is, six adjectives, you know, where you're trying to tie them all together. Is there one overall umbrella 
theme and when you call someone and you want to play for them and they say well what do you like you know uh what what is our band like are you saying uh um, sound the, the sound uh let's see here i kind of i call us uh a rock and roll string band fair enough yeah okay or, or like or rowdy string band or however you want to say it just something to differentiate you know there's tr- we have traditional bluegrass instruments in the band but um it's definitely not traditional and we kind of just get our start from or got our start from playing you know uh rolling stones and led zeppelin songs and um we kind of just like to put that sort of energy into it um uh and infuse that into you know with some uh traditional instruments and and there we are had a band come through here last year of similar theme and idea. They weren't as good as you, but the same thing kind of applied. Uh, where they are, uh, I can't remember the name of them now. See, because it didn't stick, because it had the something string band. Comatose, I would remember. So <laughs> I just, yeah. See, so it works. It really is important. It's the same thing as I told, I, I help a friend of mine, a songwriter, select photographs for his uh, tracks on YouTube for selection. And I, mm-hmm. like most songwriters, they're very focused on the content, on the who, the what. I said, Roger, you know, don't do that. We'll take the generic something that represents it, but you want an image that gets someone's attention. You just want them to stop and listen. They're not going to go back and say, wait a minute, that picture doesn't entirely represent the content of the song. And they're just not going to do that. You know? so, yeah. Uh, yeah. It really works. But, of course, now I start wondering what, what else you get up to. When you go through Starbucks, is it intravenous? Me? Personally? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I wish. I if wish. You, I drink if you really so need much. a jack-up, yeah, well, yeah when, I, when I need mine, I need it now. Don't interrupt yeah. me. Don't get in my way. Leave me alone. I want 20 minutes to sit and savor and sip and get it into the veins. Then I'll do anything you want me to do. <laughs> yeah, when we're on tour, I uh, I get a, a a first coffee and a second coffee, and I I put the second coffee in the cup holder in the van for uh you know a couple hours into the drive when the first one starts to wear off, <laughs> I get my second yeah. one ready to go. Yeah, well, yeah, my wife won't let me have the second coffee, but when I'm when I get off the phone uh, with you, I get to have another one. So this time of day is relevant. Um. Anyway, great songs. Uh, I, a few that I've been playing, I had questions on. Now, you have mentioned, I didn't know that you were doing covers of Zeppelin. Have you put anything out there, or are these just videos, or you just haven't actually recorded them? Oh, man, we've done, uh, let's see here. We we did uh, Going to California, and we do that pretty regularly, just as like a duo with my brother and I. Um, oh, God, we recorded... Uh, uh, this song, and I can't remember the name of it right now. That's so funny. Uh, it might not even be on our regular Spotify profile because we released it as like a benefit. Um, and, uh, I'm going to have to send you the link after it. It was so fun. And we like, it, it was, it's like totally spaced out. It's, there's piano and all sorts of crazy. We just like had a fun day in the studio doing a cover of it. It sounds kind of nothing like us, except there's, fiddle and banjo and mandolin but uh it it gets pretty crazy but yeah we've done all sorts of that uh we we put out a rolling stones cover on our first record um dead flowers and uh yeah we just kind of a lot of stuff we just like have fun playing and you know doing all sorts of old rock and roll tunes well it works because i really like the way that you not destroy it but deconstruct the song and then assemble it your way, uh, particularly Ooh La La, Valerie, Honky Tonk Women. I made a medley out of those three, which I put on the air. That's the one I was talking about a couple of months ago. Um, nice. Thanks. Yeah, just so, so you know, that's that's the good stuff to get people's attention on across the board and then, you know, drop those in here and there in between the originals where they, they get to see what you really get up to. Um but I, at the beginning of the show, uh, I played a track for everybody called Ain't No Grave. And I want you to accept the fact that I have now given you a, a new genre. It's called Gospel Grass. 
Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> you like that? I like that, yeah. All right, yeah. So Gospel Grass, you can now put your name underneath and say, yep, that's us. Um, <laughs> but I had some questions. What What is City Painted Gold about? Uh, city Painted Gold is kind of like a – it's um, – it's basically a, a breakup letter with the city of San Francisco. Um, and, uh, this was, this was kind of the, the last wave of stuff before it started getting such a bad rap in the news. Um, uh, probably about eight or nine years ago, um, prices just started going through the roof and my brother and I were living in a house on hate street. Um, you know, super iconic hate Nashville. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so much, so much. Were, were you uh, living in the history. toilet in the? Were you living in the toilet in someone's back room, or did you actually have your own room on Eighth Street? Oh, I actually had my own room. We had a. I mean, it's funny. Like when I first moved to San Francisco, I got into this place um, and got the rent for super cheap, and so um, you know it was rent controlled, and so the rooms were incredibly affordable. But there was this wave of tech money coming into the city, and uh, a lot of artists getting priced out and pushed out by landlords and stuff so they can, um, you know, rent it out to people that will pay a lot more money. So uh, we were on the unfortunate uh, receiving end of that, and we got kicked out of our house. And, you know, it, the city just kind of started changing a little bit. And a lot of our friends who were in uh, bands and stuff couldn't afford to live there anymore. So it's kind of like our breakup letter with the city of San Francisco. Okay, now I understand. Because there are certain things that, you know, you take for granted. For example, does Oogum Boogum have another meaning? Is it is it slang or is it something you guys came up with? Oh, that's not our that's uh I I wish. That that's a um a Brenton Wood song that we covered. Um so it I actually don't know. We kind of try to figure out the history of it, but um that is still unclear. We haven't discovered it. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, so we have some mystery for our listeners. Any listeners out there that uh, may be uh, jamming early in the morning on the West Coast and say, oh, I know what that is. Well, drop yeah, us an email, on. UK Bob, UK Bob at mindspring.com and fill in the blanks if you know what Oogum Boogum means. We're not playing the track. We're talking about the track. Those of you that are jumping in late, please don't forget to fax in a copy of the letter from my mother that excuses you for being late to the show. Uh, we're talking about a release called Ear Snacks from uh, one of those rarities that comes across my platter, the Brothers Comatose. Normally instruments that I would run screaming from, but these guys are fun. They're very good at what they play. Uh, they're super appealing, and uh, they're not bad chaps either. So uh, that's what we're doing. We're talking uh, across the coast here to Ben, and uh, we're allowed to pick on his brother because that's what we do. We pick on brothers. We can talk about him because he's not on the phone. Uh, we're going to play another song, and um, for those of you that want to pull on your mm, Yorkshire flat caps and tighten your cravats and, and be all sophisticated and discuss you about your craft beers, um, you better close your ears because you're going to hate me for this, but here it is. <laughs> the, IP the IPA song is coming right at you. Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is Mark Broussard, and you're listening to WRFG Atlanta, London to Louisiana. Don't be eating them green bananas. Let the kids believe in Santa. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Days where nothing is going right Oh, I gotta turn this thing around Before the end of the night Well, bartender, I need Something to cure my pain Well, I'll take anything you got Besides an IPA We don't want no IPA, no We don't want no IPA Don't wanna be sober
look at me like I'm crazy, but that stuff is bitter and gross. I just want to enjoy myself, I don't want to be comatose. Well, after a day of working hard, I'll belly up at the bar. You can't keep your hoppy IPAs, I'll be sipping on my PBR. We don't want no IPA, no, we don't want no IPA. All I'm going to say is you can take them all away, no, we don't want no IPA. Trying to keep it mellow Oh, you can't keep your bitter brew That costs you twice as much Well, life's too short to drink bad beer And we all know that it sucks Oh, we don't want no IPA No, we don't want no IPA When I drink a half dozen I'll be waking at my cousin Oh, we don't want no IPA We don't want no IPA Seven PBRs and I can still play guitar I can close down the bar I can still get it hard We don't want no IPA Free tickets, free tickets, free tickets This is the piece you've been waiting for More than the IPA Write this down Brothers Comatose are giving away five pairs of tickets For their show on October the 4th at aisle 5 If you would like to go just email me, ukbob at mindspring.com. I will just respond back in the time that they are received and share them with the band who will put you on the guest list. And now a message from our Public Affairs Bulletin Board. On Saturday, September 23rd, 2023, the Grow Fund, the Georgia Resilience and Opportunity Fund, presents Telling Our Stories, Black Women's Leadership Legacies, a Storming Caesar's Palace film screening, storytelling, and conversation. The event will take place from 1 to 6 p.m. at seven stages and little five points. Storming Caesar's Palace, a film by Hazel Gerlin Pooler, is about Ruby Duncan, a hotel worker in Las Vegas who joined a welfare rights group of mothers, defying the notion of a welfare queen who fought for guaranteed income along with fellow organizers, took on the Nevada mob and organized a protest that shut down Caesar's Palace. This event is co-hosted by Black Feminist Future, the Tinder Foundation, Center for Civic Innovation ATL, and Rep GA. In collaboration with Georgia Dusk, WRFG volunteers will be on site to record brief oral histories from participants that have their own stories about community members, family members, or their own experiences providing mutual aid, support, and other initiatives that deserve celebration in the canon of equal rights. Once again, this Saturday, September 23rd, from 1 to 6 p.m., at seven stages and little five points, located at 1105 Euclid Ave, Northeast, Atlanta, Georgia, 30307. For more information, sevenstages.org. So the IPA song uh, is an addition, a brand new addition uh, to the Comatose Brothers or the Brothers Comatose depends on which side of the uh, the transatlantic you you came out on. But, um, <laughs> it's one of those things that uh, I thought was hilarious because yeah, let's write about something that everyone is is constantly loving. You know, let's have some anti love. When we get to let's see Valentine's Day. I am required in my brain to play a lot of lovey-dovey music and a lot of anti-Valentine's music uh, for all those that don't want to love her. They, they, they're done with this. They're that a divorce. They have no interest. They don't believe in it. You know, there's a huge percentage of the population, probably more today than ever. So I have to play all those too. And that's what I love about this song, uh, especially the lyrics at the end. It's like you had the last, last minute whammer jammer in there to pick on those guys. I thought it was really funny. So. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you got to wait for the end to uh, to get the yes. special surprise. Yeah. <laughs> what prompted that? Oh man, I mean, we were uh, we used to be sponsored by uh, a beer company, and um, it, it was like a micro brew a brewery who, who have since gone global and, and really big. But um, they used to deliver three twenty four packs of IPA to every single tour stop on our tours, and we used to tour a lot back then and so uh we had you know 72 beers uh every single day and so we and we didn't want to like leave them behind so they're in the van we're trying to give them out to our friends we were drinking warm ipas in the van and on stage and it was just it was a disaster we were just like you just get too drunk because that's all you have and so uh we have since all just sworn them off and then only drink crappy beers now and they're not your sponsor anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, we yeah, well, I that. guess that. Yeah, well, you're on, you've got to say that because you're on air. Yeah. <laughs> True. That's that's a, a pretty good reason. Uh, yeah, you're coming yeah. to play for us on Wednesday, October the 4th at Aisle 5. Those of you who know the town, you'll know where aisle five is. It's about 500 yards down from Variety Playhouse, but it's just the cool, groovy spot for 200-odd people to catch something brand new and different. And this is brand new and different. And how, how long exactly have you... Like this, you're new to me when I say that. How long have you guys been together? Uh, we are, uh, I think, about 15 years old now. So. Um, any band changes? You and your brother stayed the same, but what else? Uh, we have um, had a few different bass players and mandolin players over the years, but uh, our fiddle player is still the same, and my brother and I are still uh, still going strong. So, oh, don't don't get me started on bass players being dime a dozen because everybody knows oh. I say that a lot, and then I run because those things are heavier. <laughs> <laughs> True. Very true. We've had more bass players than uh, Spinal Tap had drummers, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, you do a cover of Janis Joplin, Mercedes Benz. How did that appear from someone in, in Texas who's basically writing about the illusions of happiness in, in worldly goods? You know, I mean, it's it's uh, it has its purpose and its meaning, but unusual for you to pick up that. Oh, you think so? Well, I mean, you yeah. know, I, I've always been a fan of uh, Janis Joplin. I know she didn't write the song, but uh, I guess, you know, she was part of that San Francisco scene also. So maybe she was just like infused in our blood from early on. Yeah, no, I get it. I understand why it's there. And the other great thing about this collection is the deviation. It's not a string of similar things. It's a str It's a string of very different things from one to the next. Yes, you could... You could make an analysis and, and connect them somehow, some way, but from a material point of view and from a rhythm and from you know the vocals to the speed to everything else, it is very different, which you, we need more of. You want to put on something to drive or be around that's just not, you know, you start to switch off when it sounds the same. So you, you break it up very well. And that's, you know, the important thing is, as George Harrison used to talk about, the walking order, you know. It's um it, it is important like it is to have names of things. Uh, what's the other one I was going to ask you about? Um, Bucket's got a hole in it. Is what? It's an old 1933 song, but um, which used to be delivered by most people in this ramshackle, bouncy way. You've chilled it out and made it more listenable than it ever was. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> it took, yeah, I've always been a fan of that tune and Hank Williams. Um, it's funny because I don't even think about it that way. I guess I've just heard it a bunch of times and then we play our version, which we feel like is uh, an ode to the original, but I guess it just, you know, goes through you and all of your influences and things like that and then just kind of comes out how it comes out. It was it was well, not a conscious decision to to like slow it down or anything. I think it was just completely unintentional and and um, ended up being what it is. It wasn't just the speed. 
I mean, you're talking, you probably were listening to the Hank Williams, which would have been, what, 40s or 50s? Yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah, Clarence Williams wrote it and played it in 1933. Ah. But all of them are about the dissatisfaction with the world um, because no matter what I get, I don't have enough, you know? And yeah. um, so, but you, it wasn't just the speed, you, the, the way you deliver it. I mean, it's like if you could, if you could have a word for um, the inflection in someone's eyes, the micro expressions in someone's face. What you're doing is audibly is the same thing. You, you've chilled it out, and it's it's a relaxed kind. Of, it's not the drama that it was, and it really does change. So you might find it small, but for a listener. I know it's very really different for musicians. I'm not a musician, but I hang around thousands of them and have for my whole life. So I understand mm-hmm. that you might not hear, but and someone who just only listens will probably notice that. So I just thought it was uh, another very good way to put something in along with all your own stuff. So oh, I like cool. the uh, stick shifts and safety belts. Um, is that relevant to somebody's car or a trip or something like that? Um, so that's a cake song, uh, and yes, it's basically about how um, while <laughs> Japanese cars are are very economical and um, and uh, you know easy to fix and all of that, they they lack in one very uh, serious department, um, and uh, and that is that they have bucket seats and you cannot <laughs> have. Uh, your your boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever it might be sitting right next to you in the front seat. Uh, you know, you can't beat the old 60s front bench seat in those big, huge cars. Ah, yes, totally. Um, I would have loved to have ever had one of those. I wouldn't have loved to keep it on the road. Um, the maintenance must be horrendous. There was an English version called a Humber Hawk. My dad had one for a brief period that used to complain about it all the time because it drank more oil than petrol. But I remember <laughs> driving down as my sister went to a, a boarding school that was three or four hours away. So we'd have to go see her during holidays. And I remember I could stretch out. I was tall for a boy. You know, I was probably nearly six foot then. I could stretch out in the back seat quite nicely, you know. And uh, yeah. But I remember the whole frontage and the hush. Oh, well, I can't wait to have one of these when I grow up. And I, too, was thinking about all the hanky-panky I could get up to with with uh, <laughs> with the girls, etc. This is long before I had any idea what driving meant and what, what dealing with those girls actually involved. <laughs> so, yeah. For well, good. You, well, you kids, had so, to be... Uh, it seems like you figured something out. Yes, so, somewhere along the way. But to practice, practice, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's funny. Well, I knew there had to be something about it, uh, and uh, I didn't know it was cake song. So, but again, that's that's the beauty of I, what I think you guys are very good at. If you're going to take somebody else's material, you change it sufficiently enough that you might not notice it right away, and it becomes its own piece of music, which makes it enjoyable. And. Uh, yeah. I, you know, there's nothing more boring than just a straightforward replica cover. You're not bringing anything to the game, but I think you guys do. So anyway, well done on Ear Snacks. And Thank I know you. you said it's been out a month or two. So what would be the source of making a purchase? Is it digital? Is it physical? Is it both? Um, I believe it's only digital. So uh, I think you can go to our Bandcamp page. I know you can stream it everywhere you want. Um but, yeah, we don't have any printed records or CDs or anything like that, unfortunately. No, I wouldn't say, unfortunately, it's becoming just something old school. I would say the majority of people stream or purchase digital because they can manipulate it and use it. They'll actually listen to it more than they will, you know, a hard CD. Um, yeah. Sure. It depends on, the, depends on the material, you know, it depends on who's buying it and what they're, what they're into. But uh, anyway, well done. Great stuff. Uh, thanks for the time chatting with us today and October the 4th is a Wednesday night and aisle 5 everyone pretty much knows around town I'll, I'll uh, have to remind them we're about 10 days out now and uh, you've been on 
uh, in the midst of a 60-day, it seems, or maybe more like 90 days of coast to coast with a few little gaps here and there. So um, shortly after that, I think you're going to be uh, heading further up and down the East Coast, Carolinas and stuff. And what's the yeah. hardest part? You guys all travel together? Is it all a pure driving trip or...? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll probably meet the van. We'll probably meet the van somewhere along the way. And then we all drive together and then do it all. I guess in the, in between, if we have a little bit of time off, we'll fly home and see our families and then, um, then kind of go back and meet the van somewhere along the way. So, but once we're in it, we're in it. So you're, you're being honest about the fact that there are times where you miss those screaming kids. (laughs) <laughs> yeah of course i do i mean I, I i i curse them when i'm around them and then i miss them terribly when i go away but uh you know, yeah it's it is tough that doesn't actually change no matter how old they get that's just the way it is so yeah i imagine well thanks for having me on today i appreciate uh appreciate everything no it's great music great conversation and i encourage everyone to uh take a look at if you can spell it correctly the brothers comatose and you'll see the pictures and you'll listen to a quite a a wide range of of wacky content from their originals that are more serious to their excellent deconstructed covers uh the ipa song and you'll see them do it live and in person and you know that it's not really the stones in disguise on october the 4th (laughs) Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it, buddy. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good one, huh? Well, that is a wrap for today's show. Thanks to everybody who emailed or texted and said they liked something. You can always get requests. Let's close out with a 50-year time machine and go back to London in 1973, and I'll see you next week. (laughs) 